First story is titled, Am I the a-hall for banning my former mother-in-law from my house because she keeps showing up and letting herself in? My former mother-in-law is 52 years old and I am 32 years old. Back when I was 23, I got my then-girlfriend pregnant. We married soon after and she gave birth to our little girl. Two years after, my wife got extremely sick and passed soon after, leaving me with our daughter. I decided to move several states away back to my own parents, as I work a lot and my parents volunteered to help me with my daughter. This went on for a while until I made a good promotion and had enough saved up to get my own house half an hour away from my parents. And since then, watching my daughter during the day while I'm at work is split between the nanny I hired and my parents. Before you think I'm taking advantage, my parents insist on watching her. My daughter is 8 now in case you wonder, and I generally work 8 to 6. My former mother-in-law decided to move to the town I live because she wants to be close to her granddaughter slash my daughter. I initially had no issue with this. After all, my wife was her only child and my daughter her only grandchild. I only started having an issue when she actually moved. Since she moved here, she was at my house pretty much all day, including when I got home after work and the weekends. She would even be there when my daughter was at school and no one was home to clean. After having multiple conversations and arguments with her where I stated I was of the opinion her behavior was inappropriate and she was crossing boundaries, she finally toned it down for a while. However, slip-ups were and are common. Last week was the last straw for me. Since the past year and a half, I have started dating again and met a woman. However, due to corona, we have not been able to spend much time together. And with everything opening up here, I invited her over after asking my parents to watch my daughter. When we were fooling around on a couch, my ex-mother-in-law let herself in, of course without calling, knocking or asking, and proceeded to lose her mind and accused me of cheating and disrespecting my deceased wife. I finally had enough. I went over, snatched my key from her, forced her out of my home and told her she's no longer welcome in my house. She really has no one else, and several people including my parents have weighed in asking me to change my mind. I am not sure if I'm the a-hole here. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole because of three main reason. One, this is your house. Two, this is your kid. Three, this is your life. You lost your wife. I'm genuinely sorry for your loss. You grieved. You accepted your loss and then you moved on. You're not cheating on anyone and you're well within your right to not allow her into your property. Keep her away from your kid. Her reaction tells me that she'll try and push her mindset of you cheating onto your daughter. Just remember that you are the parent and that you have your own life. Am I doing the math right here? Married at 23, widowed at 25, now 32? So his wife has been gone seven years. Surely that's more than enough time to start moving on? Or does the mother expect a lifelong celibacy? Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. You've warned her multiple times. If she wants to see her grandchild, she should call you and ask either to come over or take your daughter out somewhere. I would not give the keys back. With the grandmother being pissed off at Opie, I wouldn't recommend supervised visits at the moment. Not the a-hole. Why does this woman have a key slash access code to your home? She's 100% the a-hole. Good locks make good neighbors. I wouldn't recommend giving anyone a key who doesn't live in your house, unless you're going to be gone except one person whom you can trust to not do this, like your parents or a friend. Yes, my question. I am not even allowed to enter the home of my sister without knocking. I don't have a key. Why would she have a key? Now for the next story. Am I the a-hall for not wanting my mother-in-law to take care of my baby after she tried to breastfeed him? My husband and I both work full-time and we have a two-month-old. My mother-in-law comes to our house every weekday and watches him for free while we work. We're on week three of this arrangement since I went back to work after maternity leave. It's very kind of her to do this for our family, and I appreciate it immensely. My baby is breastfed. I pump milk for her to give him during the day, and he gets milk right from the source in evenings and weekends. He loves nursing, and I do too. It's been a wonderful way for us to bond and a beautiful experience overall. Yesterday, while I was at work, I opened the baby monitor app on my phone to check and see if my mother-in-law was able to get him to take a nap in his crib. She had been texting me saying he was crying really hard, so she was thinking about just holding him for a nap. So I wanted to check and see if he was okay and if she ended up just holding him. When I looked at the camera, 
Mother-in-law was holding him, and she had her shirt up, and he was latched on her breast. I was shocked and horrified. I called her right away, and she didn't answer. So I had to sit there and watch her attempt to breastfeed my baby. He was latched on, but obviously not getting any milk, as my mother-in-law is not lactating. I called my husband at work, who eventually got a hold of her. Apparently, the baby was crying so hard, and that was the only thing she could think of to calm him down enough to sleep. She breastfed all four of her children when they were babies, and it always calmed them down enough to sleep. She was mad that I had checked the camera and told him it was an invasion of privacy. I don't want her watching my baby anymore. We can't afford a nanny or daycare. When I told my mother-in-law this, she freaked out and said I was being a witch, and she was just trying to calm the baby down and it wasn't a big deal. She says I'm taking her grandchild away from her and being unfair. My husband understands why I'm upset, but wants to give her another chance to watch the baby. He also doesn't want to spend the money to get a nanny or do daycare when she can care for our baby for free. Am I being unreasonable here? I'm so upset with her and just completely baffled at why she would do this that I never even want to see her again, let alone have her anywhere near my baby. I think I could possibly be the a-hole for checking up on her through the camera and also for not wanting her to watch my baby anymore, even though that would mean spending extra money and taking away something she really seems to enjoy doing. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. No normal human tries to breastfeed a child they are interested to look after. This is not healthy slash sane behavior. I would be concerned that she has other issues. Her reaction is telling as well. Again, a normal human would be supremely embarrassed and apologize. She may be lashing out because she's embarrassed, but it's not acceptable for her to swear at you or gasp, be incensed that you used the baby monitor for its intended purpose. This is exactly right. Clearly, her mother-in-law's judgment cannot be trusted. I wouldn't trust mother-in-law alone with a baby in any capacity, and I definitely wouldn't trust her to provide daycare services. Mother-in-law crossed a boundary that should have been obvious. And why would she think latching the baby to her breast would calm the baby down? There's no milk. I find this so revolting. I think mother-in-law should be in time out for a very, very long time. Mostly because I wouldn't be able to stomach seeing her if my mother-in-law did this. Not they hole. I'm so shocked. Has she never heard of a pacifier? My mind would never go to breastfeeding another person's baby. I'd have a hard time facing her altogether. He won't take a pacifier. We've tried, but she could have tried giving him a bottle, and she didn't. Not a hall. That is so beyond words inappropriate to me. WTF was she thinking? Her judgment is highly suspect. The fact that she defended herself by saying you invaded her privacy. And hello, she's watching your kid and shouldn't be doing anything that requires living room privacy at that point. And that she doesn't even consider what she did is wrong clearly means she's not capable of safely taking care of your child. I agree wholeheartedly with this post. I would definitely not consider unsupervised time with a little one for crazy grandma for the foreseeable future. That is your baby, not hers. The next door is titled, Am I the a-hole for asking my mother-in-law to stop hanging out with our kids while our nanny's here? My husband is deployed and we are in the process of moving back to my home country. My mother and father-in-law are staying with us until we leave. When I'm at work, we have a nanny come to our house to take care of our seven and two-year-old kids. My in-laws are staying in a studio apartment under our house that has everything they need, with its own separate entrance. When I'm home, they hang out in our house, which I'm completely fine with. The problem is that my mother-in-law likes to hang out in our house while the nanny's here. She's only here max seven hours a day, three to four days a week. Our nanny said she's fine with mother and being around sometimes, but seven-year-old has virtual learning and gets very distracted and needs firm guidance. She feels like mother-in-law is distracting, and she also feels like she can't be as firm as she'd like with mother-in-law around. She did say that it's nothing mother-in-law has done, it's just her personal preference. She also mentioned behavioral issues because mother-in-law wants to intervene and throws off their routine. We came up with a slightly revised routine to allow for some time with mother-in-law while also giving them some privacy. I said something to mother-in-law. I just asked if she could let them have a little space while I'm not here because we try to have them have a similar experience to being in school or daycare with rules and routines. I let her know about the new routine plan and she said okay. A little over a week after this talk, 
I ask our nanny how it was going, and she said nothing has changed, and mother-in-law now insists on being the first one to attempt to help seven-year-old with schoolwork. I said something to my mother-in-law again, and she became very defensive. Clearly, she didn't take the first talk as well as she led on. She said she didn't understand why it was an issue, and they were here to visit their grandkids that they may not see for another few years. Some other words were said, and unfortunately our FaceTime with my husband had to be cut short so he could talk to her. Now for the top comments. Not an a-hull. As a former nanny, family members being around makes everything so much harder. I applaud you for trying to resolve this situation. Mother-in-law needs to respect the given boundaries. Agreed. It was always my rule that I would not care for the kids if there was another adult in the house. So very many problems. I only had to be burned once to learn to stay away from that fire. Not the a-hole. Virtual learning is already not an ideal situation, and mother-in-law is making it worse by distracting her. Your nanny is 100% right in speaking to you about this, because mother-in-law is essentially hindering your child's school. Not the a-hole. I used to nanny for a family with a set of twins, and the second a family member was around, it was like I lost all authority. It really does make the nanny's job much more difficult. You made a right call. Not the a-hole. Grandma's living a minute away, so she doesn't need extra time. Grandma visits her daily, so they now need to fit the daily routine. Hard stop if school is being disrupted and authority figures are being undermined. The family is moving to another country, so mother-in-law is trying to get as much as she can. And it sounds like Opie understands, as they adjusted the schedule to give her more. It's a shame mother-in-law isn't more appreciative. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law she's fat? My mother-in-law is a retired home economics teacher and extremely obese. I would guess she's 5 flat and 300 pounds. My kids and I are a little scrawny, but active and eat fairly well. Sometimes I allow them to have a soda when we go out to eat. Sometimes they don't eat their veggies or finish their meals. I'm half Asian, so believe me, my parents were the same flavor of you best finish this food we earned for you. But they've chilled big time. They don't push their grandkids to finish or if they don't want to eat green beans. It ain't the end of the world. My mother-in-law lectured me to no end about nutrition and how she raised my husband and his siblings. Her daughter is also morbidly obese. I have said nothing until I finally lost it. I asked her if she honestly felt she was in a position to give me advice on eating. Her response made me feel bad. She said she understands nutrition but is an emotional eater, a food addict, as is her daughter. And my husband told me I shouldn't have said his mom was fat. Am I the a-hole? I feel like one, but then when I think of how much she lectures me, I feel justified. My mother lectured me to no end about nutrition. I would guess she's five flats and 300 pounds. Her daughter is also morbidly obese. It's just plain rude for her to lecture you about your eating habits or how you raise your own kids. Even if she was a healthy weight, she should keep her opinion to herself. Having a degree in home economics doesn't give her any authority to hand out and ask for advice and criticism of anyone's eating habits. Not at A-Hall. Thank you. I may be the A-Hall and I feel bad. Reading these comments helped me see her perspective. However, I have a limit in being treated like a moron. You are doing just fine the way you are raising your children and teaching them to have a healthy relationship with food. You aren't an a-hole to be annoyed by your mother-in-law criticizing your parenting. Is she getting therapy and guidance on how to handle her eating disorder? Is she getting help for her daughter? What makes your mother-in-law the a-hole isn't that she's overweight or has an unhealthy relationship with food. It's that she's got the absolute gall to lecture and criticize how you let your children eat food when they are healthy, normal weight. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Maybe she's remembering something she learned in a college course years and years ago and wants to present herself as a nutrition authority. But her and ask for lectures are ultimately tiresome, misguided, and pointless other than for her to stroke her own ego. You really are not an a-hole here. She needs to shut up about how you raise and feed your kids. No therapy. There's a lot of addiction in their family as well as a lot of pridefulness. Thanks for getting it. A lot of it is that she's know-it-all and a busybody at my expense. So when I finally called her out, maybe in a thoughtless, terrible manner, but when I finally defended myself, she boohoos and my husband's shaking his head at me for calling his mom fat. Everyone sucks here. 
I definitely understand why you were frustrated. It's rude to lecture people and their eating habits. Ultimately, I think a better way to go about this situation would be to first let her know you were confident in your ability to feed and nurture your family, and it makes you uncomfortable when she provides unsolicited advice. I think your response was a result of your frustration and maybe it didn't come out in the kindest way. I think you should apologize for being insensitive, but make it clear that you would prefer she keep her thoughts on your family's nutrition to herself. Good luck. She should apologize to mother-in-law because Abi's mother-in-law with Abi's child is lecturing her on her children's nutrition and she had enough? No. Her mother-in-law should mind her own business if she can't handle her own health and not be trying to make her daughter-in-law feel bad for how she's raising her kids. She's not a hole. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.